Sweet School on RealArtCulture.com is brought to you by Syngenta Canada, Alberta Wheat Commission, and CNM Seeds. Welcome to Real Agriculture's Wheat School series. I'm Kara Oosterhouse. In this episode, I talk to Kelly Turkington, who is a plant pathologist with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada based out of Lacombe. Kelly and I talk about Fusarium head blight, where it comes from, some of the research he's been doing with it, as well as the importance of irrigation management when it comes to dealing with FHB. Well, Fusarium head blight, uh, I would say, is one of the key constraints for successful s small grain cereal production in Western Canada now. Uh, it's a disease that's been a, a problem in the Eastern Prairie region since probably uh, the mid-1990s, early to mid-1990s, and unfortunately has become more of a, a problem uh, further westward, is initially starting in Eastern Saskatchewan and then throughout Saskatchewan, Southern Alberta, and now unfortunately in many areas outside of Southern Alberta, we're starting to see uh, the problem becoming more of a concern. So what research have you been working on in regards to fusarium head blight? So our, our focus at Lacombe, and we've done some work with colleagues elsewhere in the province especially, and elsewhere on the prairies, has been uh, surveillance for the main or the key or the most important causal agent, which is fusarium graminiarum. So we've been looking for it since... Uh, the mid-1990s uh, and at that time and then up until probably the mid to sort of 2005 or so it really wasn't a, a pathogen that was typically found in many areas of the province outside of perhaps uh, southern Alberta and uh, so that situation has changed um, uh, you know we're looking at starting some work to uh, develop some integrated crop management strategies for the for this particular disease, but it, it is certainly uh, of all the issues that I deal with and try to develop practical strategies to manage, it's probably one of the most difficult to, to uh, get a, a really high level of control on. For irrigation farmers, how does irrigation management play a role with this? And irrigation in a, an area where which is typically dry and is in an area where the conditions are not normally conducive for fusarium head blight, uh, managing your irrigation can be an extremely important strategy to, to deal with uh, fusarium graminiarum. Uh, if you look at trying to limit your irrigation as the crop is coming into head emergence and during that anthesis period, probably for about seven to 10 days, and even if you can extend it a bit longer, uh, that will re produce conditions that are less conducive to the disease. Uh, the challenge is meeting the water needs of the crop uh, at the same time. So often you want to probably recharge your, your water in your soil prior to head emergence, limit the irrigation or stop it altogether, and then couple that with a fungicide application at anthesis and growing a variety that that's got a really good level of resistance. How reliable of an option is fungicide applications with FHB? Oh, I, I have a lot of experience with leaf disease management and, and striped breast management in cereals with fungicides. It's a very useful tool when you have a, a risk there. Unfortunately, with fusarium head blight, uh, the level of control with uh, fungicides is not as good as we see with striped rust or, or the leaf diseases. So uh, it is an important strategy. And, and, and even though we see uh, that it, it doesn't provide the same level of control, there may be some, some key things to look at that will improve the producer's um, or get the mo will allow the producer to get the most out of that fungicide application. When is the key time that farmers need to be keeping an eye out for it? So in terms of uh, symptoms in the field, uh, the key time would be uh, towards uh, the latter part of, of grain filling. So if the infection takes place around anthesis, usually within about 
two weeks, you'll start to see symptoms. And the typical symptoms in wheat are quite distinct. So the, the rest of the plant, other than the head, is nice and green. The top part of the stem is green. The head itself, you can see parts of the head that prematurely ripen, or half the head or the whole head. Uh, that could indicate you have FHB. The key thing is to look very closely at that head tissue. And if you see either orangey or pinky or salmony colored uh, spore masses, and they're material that you'll see often in the crevices of those infected prematurely portions of the uh, portions of that head that is indicative of it being fusarium now the key is is it gruminarium is it one of these other species so if you see those symptoms it's potentially uh, there's potentially an issue there uh, the next stage would obviously be when you harvest your grain so if you look at the grain itself uh, you can if there is an issue there will you can see these shriveled kernels which are chalky white in appearance so in wheat, the symptoms are fairly distinct. The difficulty is which fusarium species are you dealing with. In is there anything you'd like to add in regards to the research you've done? Uh, probably the only thing with FHB is that it, it's a disease that's going to need, uh, you need to target it with, a, with, a, with multiple strategies. So you can't choose a, a particular strategy, for instance, if you're looking at a leaf disease. Uh, if you use a fungicide, you can get really good levels of control. With, with fusarium head blight, you need to use a combination of strategies. So rotations with at least two years between susceptible crops, choosing a resistant variety, uh, scouting the crop, uh, following some of the risk uh, aids that are out there. And there's some things that I think are coming up for producers in Alberta in 2017 to gauge the risk and the need to spray a fungicide. Using good application technology and listening to, to people like Tom Wolf and some of the advice that Tom has as far as getting good coverage of that head. Using a good product, using the right timing, and uh, with that combination of strategies, you can improve your chances that you're going to manage it to a point where it may help to limit the amount of downgrading or uh, mycotoxin contaminants. <music>